Today, I want to show you one of the single message transforms that you can use as part of Apache Kafka Connect. Kafka Connect, if you're not familiar with it, is part of Apache Kafka. It's the integration API for Apache Kafka, and it lets you stream data in from systems upstream into Kafka, and from Kafka downstream to other places. And single message transforms are part of Kafka Connect, and they let you optionally put in processing in part of that ingestion pipeline. So either at the ingest point or egress. So we can do things like as data flows in from a source system, make modifications, drop a field, rename the topic and so on. Or we can say as data is flowing from Kafka downstream, make modifications to that data. Maybe we have the full data set in the Kafka topic, but we only want partial fields sent down to the target system. So we can just drop those fields as they pass through the Kafka Connect pipeline. Or we can change data types, or like I'm going to show you today, you can start to insert additional information. You can add in information such as the offset of the message that you read, or in the case that I'm going to show you, add in the timestamp of the message itself. So everything I'm going to show you, you can find on the demo scene uh, GitHub repository. So this is uh, where we put a lot of our demos and so on. So this is over here. And from here, there's a Docker Compose file. So that's what I'm going to be using here. That's what you can take away and use yourselves. You say Docker Compose up, and it spins up the whole environment like we can see here. So I'm going to say Docker Compose PS and make sure that everything's up and running, and it looks like it is. So we've got a Kafka Connect worker. And to start with, I'm going to create myself a source connector, which is just going to generate some uh, test data for us to work with. So I'm using a connector called Voluble here. There's other ones, there's Kafka Connect Data Gem, which is a very good one as well. But Voluble just lets you generate different types of data in kind of an easy way. So we're going to create that connector. So we do a, a put against the appropriate REST endpoint, and that's going to start populating a couple of different topics. So it says it's created it, and we're going to say uh, sort uh, against the output of the status endpoint, and it shows us that the connector itself has been created and it's running. So from that, we can then have a look at the data that's being created. So I'm going to use Kafka Cat here. Uh, Kafka Cat is a rather useful tool. It lets you just poke around with the data. It's like Netcat, but for Kafka. So we're going to say to start with, just show me the data, the topics that exist on the broker. So we've got a bunch of internal topics like this. And then we've got one called customers, and we've got one called transactions. So these are the ones that uh, Voluble is populating. We can have a look at the data further. So we could say, let's have a look at the transactions topic and use dash C for consumer. Dash J formats the output in JSON and pipette through JQ. And it looks like this. So we say you've got data in the transactions topic. It's in partition zero. This message was at this offset. And we can see it's got a key and it's got a payload. The payload is in Avril, so it's a binary compressed format. We've also got a field here called timestamp. And this is the timestamp of the Kafka message. Now, when you produce messages to Kafka, the producer can say, I would like to set the timestamp specifically. So they could set it to a particular timestamp appropriate to the business application that's producing that data. But by default, the broker will set that timestamp and you can set what it sets it to. But here it's set to the time at which that message is received by the broker. So we've got a timestamp as part of our message metadata. It's not part of the payload itself. It's not part of the key. It's actually metadata that exists for the message itself, just like it's offset and it's partition. The timestamp is part of the metadata for a message. And that metadata is useful. And sometimes we want to persist that when we send that data on downstream. So let's see that in action. So I'm going to cancel that there and clear the screen. And to start with, we're going to create ourselves a connector which is going to stream that data into a database. So we're going to say, here's the connector, and it's going to send the data using the JDBC sync connector, and it's going to stream it over to MySQL. So we say, here is my database here. It's a MySQL database. Here's how I connect to it. The topic is the transactions topic. And we're saying use four tasks at maximum, but there's only one topic, so we'll probably only see one task running. So we create that. And again, we're going to use the REST API to check the status of it. And it says it looks like that's running. And we've got four different tasks, but only one of them will probably be actually doing anything. OK, so that's running. So if we head over to MySQL and have a look at the data that sits within there, you can say show tables. We've got a table called transactions. And we can say describe transactions. And it says here's the data that's in that uh, there. 
and we can say select star from transactions and we can see about the data as it flows in and if I refresh that you can see this row count at the bottom 373 rows that goes up each time because we've got new data arriving on the source topic so we've got new data streaming down to the target. So now let's add in that timestamp information. So to do this I'm going to split the screen there so we can do both of these things at once. We're going to create our connector again. We're going to update our connector using this configuration. So let's paste it in and see what we've got. So we're going to use a single message transform. So single message transforms, uh, you get a bunch of them that ship with Apache Kafka. So we're just going to reference them in the configuration. You get other ones which you can install separately. So uh, Confluent Platform have some, Debezium have got some, there's other community ones. So you can install uh, transformations separately if you want to, but there are a bunch that ship with Apache Kafka. And one of these is the ones that we're looking at here. So we use the transforms uh, bit of the configuration to specify that we've got a transformation. You give it a label. So in this case, we call it insert TS. And then you've got your transforms prefix here and then the label insert TS. And then you say, what type is it? So in this case, it's the insert field type and that's its full class name there. And then we say dollar value because we're inserting it into the value part of the message. We could put dollar key and insert it into the key part of the message. But if you see this in the documentation, you see this dollar value or dollar key, it's simply do you want to deal with the value part of the message or the key part of the message? So we've got transformations. There's one of them called insert TS. Insert TS has got this type. And then different transformations may or may not have additional configuration, depending on what they're doing. In this case, we've got some configuration because we're saying we want to insert a field, but what do we want to insert? There's different things that you can insert. So if we have a look at uh, this web page over here, here's the documentation for that particular transformation. So you can see you can do uh, the insert field and you can insert the offset of the Kafka message, the partition from which it was read. You can insert the timestamp, which is what we're going to do. You can insert the topic. You can also insert a static field with a value. So if you want to hard code some lineage information, for example, you could say insert this field with this particular value. But now we're going to say insert a timestamp field. So we're saying uh, here's our transformation insert the timestamp field and call it message TS. So now if I just page up and remind ourselves what we did, we did a put against the existing connector. So that's just updated it in place. We changed one other thing in that connector and we said auto evolve is true. So previously it was auto create. So it goes and creates the table in the target database. Now we're saying, well, also, because we're going to have changed the schema, auto evolve set to true by default, it's false. Auto evolve means that the sync connector will actually go and run the necessary alter command against that target table to evolve the schema to match the, the, uh, the new schema that we're sending through. And it's got a new schema because we've added in this new field message TS. So let's see that's being created. Again, let's look at the status endpoints. We can see that that's running as well. So now if we head over to my SQL and say, let's uh, describe that particular table. So describe transactions. We can see it's evolved the table. We've now got a column there, which is a date time field called message TS. And if we say select star from transactions, you can see now we've also got the timestamp in there. So um, this is our date part of it. That's our time part of it with seconds and uh, milliseconds. So 794 rows. 818 rows. It's got that new data arriving all the time. For the data that was in the table before we added in that timestamp, it will just have null values. So you can say select from uh, transactions where message timestamp, uh, message timestamp is null. And you can see you've got those existing ones and you can say where it's not null. And we've got the new ones there being added in all of the time. We can also see this if we use it with the S3 connector. So over here, we're going to bring in our S3 connector and we're going to say this. We do another step in the transformations here. So it's another good example of another single message transform. So let's uh, close that MySQL bit there and clear the window. And here is our connector. We're using the S3 sync connector. We're sending it over to this particular bucket in this particular region. The credentials I've set as environment, environment variables, which get passed into the particular container which is running. We're going to send over both topics here. Uh, again, for tasks maximum, we're sending it over in JSON. And then here are our transformations. 
So we've got the same insert TS as before. So it's uh, insert field, and this is the field that we're going to insert. It inserts it as an epoch value. So uh, a big int field of the number of seconds or milliseconds since the Unix epoch back in 1970. So that may be what you want. And because it's set as a timestamp, when it got sent to MySQL earlier in the JDB sync, sync connector, it created a, a timestamp column in the database. When we send the data over to S3, as a, a JSON um, encoded file, it will create it and it will write it just as that epoch value. So you get like a bunch of how many milliseconds since 1970. You may or may not want that. You may actually prefer it as a string. So this is where we can use a second transformation. So we've got here, which transformations have we got? We've got insert TS. We've also got one that's called format TS. You can give it any name, but I'm calling it format TS. Format TS has got a type. You've always got to type for your transformations. The type is the timestamp converter. Where are we applying it to? We're applying it to the value. And then we say we'd like to format this field here. We'd like to format it into a string using this format. So we go and create that. It says, okay, I've created it. Let's go and have a look at the status. So again, here is our status. We can see the sync connector is running. It's got four different tasks that are running. And now we can head over to my bucket in S3. And one thing that we do want to just check is the connector that we created, uh, our S3 connector, where's our S3 connector? S3 connector here, it's got a flush size. So how many messages is it going to process before it flushes it to S3? If this is high, you're not going to see anything appearing in S3 for a while. So if you're prototyping, you're sandboxing, and you think like, where's my data? Well, the flush size hasn't been hit. If you leave it too low and you're using this like in real, you're going to end up with kind of like awful lot of latency and kind of like inefficient things going on because you end up kind of making network calls every message you receive. And you probably don't want to do that. You probably want to batch it up into a bigger thing. But for testing and stuff like that, we want to see it as soon as it's um, available. So we set it suitably low. So we head over to S3 and we say, where is my data? And it says, here is your data. So here is our bucket and we go into topics. And it says you've got um, a topic called transactions, and we go into there. Uh, it says in partition zero, you've got a bunch of different uh, JSON files. There's going to be quite a lot of them because we're rotating it um, every 16 messages. The messages are being created at two a second, so they're going to be ticking over pretty frequently. So if we then go and have a look at one of these files, and click on open here and download the JSON, and have a look at that JSON, we can see over here, we've got the message timestamp has been added into it. We can format this if we want to. So format document. So here are our JSON messages. There's a customer ID. There's the message timestamp that we've added in using that single message transformation. So stay tuned for more single message transformations fun that you can do with Kafka Connect. Check out the other videos on this YouTube channel. And of course, hit that subscribe button.